Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Chucky2009, and today we're going to be talking about hard surfacing or hard facing. You can pretty much use those terms interchangeably, uh, you know, with the shielded metal arc process, better known as stick welding. So, alright, to be honest, I don't have a huge amount of experience hard surfacing. However, this is something that a lot of people have requested a video of, so I've taken it upon myself to uh, get some steel, go out, buy some electrodes, do a bunch of research, and I'm putting this video together in hopes that someone will find it that has like a smaller hard surfacing job, maybe they live on a farm, they have like a tractor loader bucket, something along those lines. Uh, you know, if it's anything super critical, you'll probably end up with some kind of a welding procedure. But, you know, like I said, if this is something you're doing out in your garage or whatever, you really don't know where to begin, hopefully this video is going to help you. So first off, uh, what is hard surfacing? Basically, it's when you take a worn part like this, this is some... Uh, what I believe to be 3 8 inch mild steel that I pretty much went out with a with a uh, angle grinder just to simulate years of some kind of strange wear pattern. But basically, hard surfacing is the process of taking this and fixing all the uh, all the damage to it and building it back up to as good as it was new or better by use of electrodes that are harder than your base metal. So hopefully it won't uh, wear down anymore. So again, in the interest of making this a video that pretty much anyone can benefit from, just a basic little thing. I've gone to the local tractor supply and picked up some of these Hobart hard surfacing electrodes and part of the reason I chose to use these particular electrodes is because they're available any tractor supply, Rural King, Farm and Fleet, places along those lines. I mean you can find them anywhere. So, alright, let's get started. First off, you're obviously going to want to clean off your base metal. I don't know if it's rusted, I don't know if there's grease, oil, anything along those lines, but as always you're going to want to get that nice and clean. Once you've done that, you're going to want to take it upon yourself to repair any cracks or gouges, things along those lines, with what's known as a buttering layer. And the buttering layer is, it's basically, if you picture a hamburger, you know, your bottom bun's going to be the piece of base metal, your buttering layer is going to be your nice piece of cooked hamburger, and the hard surfacing layer is going to be your top bun. I guess, I guess that's my food analogy, if you can't tell I'm kind of hungry as I'm making this. But your buttering layer, is gonna, that's what actually builds up the worn and damaged parts. Why do we need a buttering layer, you ask? Uh, because you don't want to put down a really thick coat of you know hard surfacing material because as the name implies it's very hard, it's prone to cracking, and if you put down like five passes of it, then you know there's a substantial chance it is going to crack and it's going to break off in little pieces, and that's just that's you know a little bit on the counterproductive side. So, essentially, you're going to want to take your worn piece, build it back up so it's smooth, all the gouges are filled in with your buttering layer, and then just put a, I guess you could call it like a cover pass on, you know, of hard surfacing material. Moving on, yeah, like I said, top coat. You don't want to go too crazy because, like I said, it's hard, it's prone to cracking, you could break off in little pieces. Preheat accordingly. Now, my little uh, simulated whatever the heck this is supposed to be, appears to be just regular low carbon mild steel so I'm not going to really mess around with the preheat however the higher the carbon content of your steel if you're working with any kind of manganese steel or cast iron things along those lines you're really going to need to preheat that and uh, the higher the carbon content the harder it is to, the harder it's going to be for you to weld without it cracking thus the more preheat you're going to need uh, in general the easiest way to determine this is what's known as the spark test. Basically, it's when you take an angle grinder, or whatever you're working with, and the sparks it shows, the sparks it throws off, are going to tell you a lot about the base metal. And I'm not really going to go into that in this video. However, there's a lot of good information out there on the internet about spark testing, and uh, you know maybe I'll make a video about that sometime. But as of when I'm shooting this, I don't have one up, but I might work on that. All right, moving on. You're going to want to use low penetration. I know this sounds completely counterintuitive to what you generally think about when you're welding. You know, you really want to burn it in, so to speak, tie in your pieces of base metal well. When you're hard surfacing, you want good fusion. I mean, you do want to tie in, but you don't want deep penetration. And uh, you might be wondering why that is. Well, our base metal and our buttering layer is going to be a lot softer than our hard surfacing layer. So if we take our, our hard surfacing electrodes and really burn it deep to what we're hard surfacing, what we're going to do is we're going to mix the softer steel uh, that's on everything else to the harder steel of the uh, of the hard surfacing electrodes and in the end it's going to be a lot softer than just the regular hard surfacing electrodes. So basically you want to make sure you're getting good fusion but you don't want to burn in too deep. Uh, a good analogy I'd use is it's like running 6013 versus 6010. You want the 6013 in this case if that makes sense. You can get good fusion but you're not going to penetrate deep into the plate. And that's something to keep in mind. Another thing, you're going to want to use a lot of overlap when you overlap these beads. 
We're basically just going to run stringers across this plate here. And uh, the more overlap, the better. You don't want really epic overlap, but at the same time, you don't want your beads to just barely touch each other. And the reason you want a lot of overlap is because it's going to look a little bit better than really spacing your beads out. But the main reason is, again, if you use more overlap than not, you're going to be tying your new bead into the previous bead versus the base metal. And again, the previous bead is going to be harder steel. So, you know, when you put down more overlap, you're getting harder steel into your weld puddle versus picking up softer steel from the base metal. You know, it's basically the same reason we want low penetration. All right, moving on here, bead placement. All right, this is the one. This is the part of this entire video that I already know people are going to be like, Ah, oh, you know, I'm working on this or that, and someone drew up a welding procedure. We paid thousands of dollars to have an engineer do that, and for this, in this, in, in this specific case with this specific electrode, this is how we do it. So your way's wrong. Again, keep in mind this is supposed to be a basic video. Uh, people can do this out in your garage or out in your barn or whatever, whatever you're working with. So that's why this is as is. You know, like I said, if it's really something high dollar, if you're building brand new mining equipment, you're going to have a welding procedure. Uh, if you're working on stuff in your garage, you're obviously not, so this is where you pay attention to this part of the video. Alright, if you're going to be working with softer material, if it's like the uh, like a front end loader bucket on a tractor that you use to move dirt and sand, if it's on a farm, maybe some manure, or whatever, you're going to want to place your beads perpendicular to how they're going to be worn down. As you can see, our beads would run vertically here as you're seeing it on camera. If we were going to shove this into our big old pile of dirt this way, so that way the dirt is going to wash over our beads as such, you know, perpendicular to how they're placed on the base metal. If you're working with harder material, gravel, stone, things along those lines, you're going to want to place your beads parallel to the direction in which you're going to be worn down. Pretty much just the opposite of what we were just talking about. And if you're going to use your front end loader bucket for a little bit of everything, it's not a bad idea to use like a 45 degree grid pattern and, uh, you know, as such. But Another thing to keep in mind is when you determine how you're going to place your beads, you might want to consider warpage. I mean, if this is something that's reinforced uh, just by its own shape, so it's not going to cup up like this, but it could go in and out like this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to place your beads so it's going to try to cup up like that, and, uh, and then the shape of whatever it is is going to prevent that from happening. That's just another thing to keep in mind. You know, it's just, uh, you want to take a little bit of time, plan this out a little bit before you actually start burning these expensive electrodes. So first off, we're going to do a buttering layer, and uh, we're going to do that for obvious reasons that I talked about here, and also to practice getting our overlap just right, because the 7018s we're going to be using are like two something dollars a pound. These are a little over two dollars per electrode, so you're going to want to get a little bit of practice in before we start burning up these expensive things. So, all right, let's get set up. Now, as always, when you're welding, you're going to want to wear your proper safety gear. And this is something that I pretty much never wear, but I feel the need to make an exception to that today because we're talking about buttering and using other cooking related terms. So I feel the need to don the great man apron of welding. And you're definitely going to want to not breathe in the fumes from this. So, you know, being that you're hard surfacing, maybe you can do it outside directly on whatever you're working with or get some good natural ventilation going, wear a respirator, or use a fume extractor. Let's do it. So now our nice uh, buttering layer, pad of beads, whatever you want to call it is finally done. I cleaned it up, let it cool off, and basically if you look over most of this, you'll notice that across the top it's all nice and smooth. There's not not a lot of rippling effect. This indicates what I would consider to be about the proper amount of overlap. Down here on the other hand, this is not enough over, overlap. As you can see, we have a nice valley in between these beads. You know, if you run your finger along here, it's, it's all nice and smooth. You get to this, like bam, up and down like that. And uh, that's not enough overlap over here. You can see this is too much overlap. This is one bead pretty much just stacked up on top of the other one, and uh, so this is kind of what you're this is kind of what you're trying to achieve here, somewhat. So now we are only moments away from beginning the actual hard surfacing on this fine piece of scrap metal, and we still have these two nice boxes of Hobart electrodes I picked up, and I actually stopped by the local Menards or Menards, whatever you call that place and picked up some of this uh, U.S. Forge stuff, so we have, we have two kinds of electrodes to try out here. 
Now a couple things I will also add in before we get started real quick. You don't want to weld over any old hard surfacing deposits because that's a pretty surefire way that you'll have cracking, you know, little bits of your hard surfacing breaking off in pieces. You don't want any of that. So you're going to have to grind it out, gouge it out, do whatever it takes to, uh, you know, to get that stuff out of there. And also, these are all 8th inch electrodes, and uh, you know, like I said earlier, you don't want to put down like a ton of layers of hard surfacing material. You, you pretty much just want to use the stuff as a top coat, and uh, you know, if you need a thicker layer than what this is going to provide, get some bigger electrodes, try some larger diameter flux core wire, just uh, don't do a whole bunch of layers. So with that being said, let's do it! So I just burned up the last of the Hobarts, and uh, overall, I don't really have any main complaints. I guess the biggest thing is the lack of information that came on the packaging, but like I said, I started off around 126 amps, and uh, once the plate heated up, I cooled it down about 5, so you know, the last one of those I ran was, well, 120, I guess that's 6 amps. But uh, like I said, I ran on DC electrode negative, and they ran pretty well. They did have a very nice uh, fluid puddle which reminds me more of 7024 than anything else I've ever welded with and uh, for that reason I don't, I don't really think I'd recommend them out of position but the slag could come up a bit easier but those were not bad uh, yeah that wasn't bad at all next up let's do the, uh, the US Forge ones this entire electro just disintegrate. Look at that, we got cracks in the flux and everything. Well there you go ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are officially out of electrodes. Those US Forge ones, they, they didn't run half bad, but like I said, one of them did just disintegrate, so yeah, I can't say I really recommend those. But anyway, as you can see, this is our nice little pad of beads. And I guess this about concludes the video, so I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. This is a pretty expensive video to make, actually. Those things are not cheap at all. But, uh, you know, if y'all enjoyed it, I'm sure I could get my hands on some nice uh, flux core, hard surfacing wire. So, if that's something you'd like to see, just let me know. And anyway, I really hope this video has helped you guys out. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. 